All right. Okay. We are good to go. Okay. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for April 26, 2023 is called to order. And uh, I'll give no and give note with notices given that the members of the commission um, may vote to go into an executive session to address any to get any legal advice from the city's attorneys at any time. And um, uh, we're ready for the roll call now. There we go. Um, we were just making sure we were actually streaming. Okay. Uh, Marie Jones. Here. Bob Harris. Here. Ricardo Guthrie. Present. Mary Norton. Uh, Marshall Camp. Here. Ian Sharp. Present. And Carol Mandino. Present. Okay, thank you. And at this time, any member of the public may address the commission on any subject that is not scheduled on the agenda today. Uh, the due to open meeting laws, the commission can't discuss or act on the items presented during this portion. Is there anybody from the public who would like to make a comment on an item that is not on the agenda today? I don't see any hands. So we'll move on and we're ready to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Wednesday, uh, April 19th. This is, this is Carol Mandino and I move to uh, accept the minutes as written. Okay, and Ian, I'll ask you for a comment, but uh, we need to get a second first. I'll second that. Okay, thank you. And then, um, uh, Ricardo? I'm having trouble opening up my mic. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to, to ensure that the recorded minutes were corrected to have an update that I was excused. The copy that I had um, still had absent, and so I had not seen a, a new version since then. Okay, so can we have that change to say abs uh, excused rather than absent? So I cannot change the word absent. That's part of the software that generates the minutes. But we have already updated the minutes. It's posted on the website and it says excused after his name. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Again, um, it's hard to vote on something you haven't seen. So. I just wanted to make sure that was recorded. If the software won't allow you, I understand. Thank you. Okay, we have any other discussion before we vote? Yes, this is the end. The only thing, and I don't know if it needs to be edited or not, but I know that we opened up um, the opportunity for people to have public comments on the NAH Village who had not yet spoken. So I don't know if that needs to be added to the minutes or not. Um, yes, that's right, we did. Um, yeah, that's a, we don't, we don't have, uh, Becky here to give us the word on that, but, um, if that needs to be in there. I can, um, amend those minutes to reflect, um, that we offered public comment. And as part of my motion, I accept that, um, that addition to the minutes. Great. And, and does our, and does uh, our Bob will, that? Yeah, Bob will need to accept that as well. Yes, I accept that. All right. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? And the motion passes. So we'll move to the item five is the public hearing. Uh, we have one uh, case. This is a uh, conditional use permit.
for the Carter High Occupancy Housing Development. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> well, good afternoon, Planning and Zoning Commission, Chair, Vice Chair, members. My name is Patrick St. Clair. I'm a planner for the City of Flagstaff, and I'm here to introduce you to the Carter Single Family Residence High Occupancy Housing Application for a Conditional Use Permit. This is project number PZ23-00033. Uh, oops, sorry, I advanced the wrong slide. Sorry, I'll advance your slides. Okay, uh, so the application request is from Robert Colton on behalf of uh, James and Sharon Carter Trust. The proposal is for a single family high occupancy housing development use at 40 North Lake Hills Drive, which is part of the Country Club Ridge subdivision in the zone to state residential uh, ER. This map indicates the parcel with a red boundary and red star. The parcel is approximately 7.11 acres and the proposed use is allowed in the zone with an approved conditional use permit. In September of 2022, city staff approved a building permit application, uh, BP 2200841, for a 1,588 square foot addition to an existing three bedroom, three bathroom, single family home on the subject parcel. The existing home can be seen in blue on the plan and the approved addition can be seen in green. For this application, areas triggering the need for an approved CUP can be seen in yellow. An existing guest house and garage on the parcel is not included in or affected by this application, and that structure can be seen in gray. Uh, please note that the addition is within the development envelope, which is indicated by the red dashed line as required by the subdivision plat. The outer long dash, short dash line represents the parcel boundary. The focus of the conditional use permit is to review the inclusion of a single bedroom and the inclusion of a full bath within the area of the approved addition. If the CUP is approved, the residence will contain seven be bedrooms and five bathrooms. Uh, the seventh bedroom would originate from the conversion oops, of a storage room into a sleeping room. And the fifth full restroom would emerge by adding a shower and a tub to an already approved half bath servicing multiple bedrooms in the addition. And you can see those two areas um, in the yellow squares there. The proposed seventh bedroom and fifth bathroom have no effect on the elevations for the addition. Uh, though not affected, please note that the elevations of the single story addition seen here are in keeping with the character and appearance of the existing and surrounding homes. Uh, the Planning Commission may approve the conditional use permit only after making three findings. The first of these three, three findings is to determine if the conditional use is consistent with objectives of the zoning code and the purpose of the parcel zone. The parcel is a large rural lot characteristic of the estate residential zone. It has ample open space and the proposal retains the existing single family land use consistent with the expectations of the estate residential zone. This, zone's al this zone allows for single family high occupancy housing development with an approved CUP. The CUP process allows for a more discretionary review of the proposed use and conditions may be proposed to mitigate any effects of the proposal. Staff recommended conditions will be addressed further on in this presentation. Uh, the second finding to be made is that the grant that granting the conditional use will not be detrimental to the public health, safety or welfare. Uh, the addition already has an approved building permit and is under construction. If the proposed project is developed in accordance with city code standards and requirements, the project should not be detrimental to public health, safety or welfare. 
All changes required to the approved building permit based on an approval of the conditional use permit will be subject to building permit resubmittal process for review and approval. The last finding required is to determine if the CUP and the proposed uses are compatible with the types of uses permitted in the surrounding area. To ensure this finding is met, the project must adequately address the following nine topics. Uh, topic one, access, traffic, and circulation. The residence has access via the existing driveway from uh, North, North Lake Hill Drive. Uh, high occupancy housing single family developments are required to provide one parking space per bedroom. The residence has a three car garage and ample driveway parking to fit the seven required parking spaces. Again, the guest house and its access and parking are not affected by this proposal. Uh, topic two is adequacy, adequacy of site. The proposed lot coverage is about 2% and the zone allows 17%. The proposal is within the development envelope stipulated by the subdivision plat and so complies with resource protection standards. The proposal does not affect any steep slopes or floodplain and complies with ER uh, zone standards for setbacks and building height. Uh, regarding topic three, it's not anticipated that the project will generate any noise, visual or other, other pollutants into the area as shown by the elevations. Uh, the proposal fits the style and siting of the existing residents and neighboring residences, uh, which addresses topic four. Uh, there are no landscape requirements for the use, and the proposal will capitalize on existing utilities with no offsite improvements required. These address topics five and six. Uh, regarding topic, se uh, topic seven, no signage is proposed, and exterior lighting will be required to comply with the standards of the code of the zoning code. Outdoor lighting standards allow the development 10,000 lumens of outdoor lighting um, if using non-LED bulbs and 6,933 lumens of outdoor lighting if using all LED bulbs. Outdoor lighting must be fully or partially shielded and single family residential building permits uh, do not require a separate outdoor lighting permit. Uh, the proposal uh, does not require any dedication or development of streets and has no state or federal historical significance as discussed earlier. Resource protection standards are met by the proposal and that addresses topics eight and nine. Conditional use permits are required to provide notice for neighborhood meetings and public hearings. On March 2nd, 2023, the applicant mailed a neighborhood notification letter to affected residents within a 300 foot radius Notifying of the CUP, notifying them of the CUP, and providing contact information uh, for any comments on the proposal. Uh, the letter was mailed in lieu of holding a neighborhood meeting. Uh, 17 days later, on April 8, 2023, the applicant mailed a notice of public hearing letters to the same uh, property owners within the 300-foot uh, notification radius. Two days later, on April 10th, the applicant applicant posted a sign on the property indicating the CUP hearing time, date, virtual public uh, virtual uh, public hearing link and other information. Uh, since the time of the staff report, three members of the public have made comments on the proposal. Copy of, copies of these comments are attached to the staff report or have been emailed to the commission. One of the comment letters does not support approving the CUP, citing excessive noise of people and music originating from the area of this parcel. The two other comment letters are in support of the development, citing no noise complaints and indicating that the Country Club Ridge HOA does not permit rentals less than six months. Staff recommends that in accordance with the findings presented in this report, approval uh, that the commission uh, approve uh, PZ 23-00033 with the following conditions that the development of the site shall substantially conform to the plans as presented with a conditional use permit, and that the property owner shall maintain compliance with the Flagstaff Police Department's crime-free multi-housing program unless they are exempted by the police department's representative. That is the end of my presentation. Um, are there any questions for staff? And uh, just a reminder, the applicant may also wish to present or make comments to the commission as well.
Thank you, Patrick. Um, can I, I have a question uh, about this, uh, why this um, property, um, why this project would require a conditional use permit. Is this because of an ordinance that was passed, I don't know, I want to say a couple of years ago, that was an attempt to deal with the fact that people, you know, to avoid the whole, um, what can I say, um, problem of people um, converting um, large single family homes into multi housing developments. I think I would I would say say yes. It 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 w the the standards for um, high occupancy housing for single family residences the, the trigger points are um, seven bedrooms or five full bathrooms um, in within a single family residence. So those are the those are those points that that once they're hit uh, the code says it's got to get a conditional use permit. Um, approved or they cannot do this, uh, which um, which is why right now the as approved it's a six bed four bath uh, single family residence. Okay, and are there any any other requirements um, that would um, prevent this from being sort of you know like individually rented units or something like that? Or is it just going through the process itself, which is considered discretionary enough? Well, I believe you know, I don't I don't know if if you know that's I think it's really just that these single family homes, some of these larger single family homes um, are hitting those trigger points. Um, obviously, you know, for, for this particular development, they um, have noted that this is for their family, for family use, um, for, you know, a larger family to gather. Um, so, you know, I think the, the, the point is, is that we want to make sure that that we're um, uh, more were other were anyone other than the family to be using it? Yes, there's adequate parking, but um, I believe it's up to eight unrelated people within a single family home is the limit for that use too. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, are there any other questions from the commissioners for staff? Um, would the um, would the applicant like to speak to their project to the commission if they're here? Yes, hi, this is Sarah Colton, Robert Colton's wife. Um, we'd appreciate your um, time reviewing our application. And it's really just... Um, Basically, for our family who has grown with grandchildren and, um, you know, those kiddos will be having kids. So we're just wanting to have enough space when we gather for um, Thanksgiving and um, summer activities that we, everyone has a room that and we can all stay together. OK, thank you. Uh, any any questions from the applicant from the commission? Um, I don't. I have my my husband here. We actually he had to fly to San Diego today, Robert. Um, we had a death in the family, and so um, he's currently at the airport and wasn't able to get on the team's um, meeting. But I have him here on another phone via speakerphone. So, um, do you have anything to add, Bob? Um, no, you summarized it pretty well. Uh, the The existing home is basically a three bedroom, three bath home. And we're just trying to enlarge it for for additional family members. We've been going to motels and 
outside Airbnbs. <laughs> Airbnbs. Yeah, to fit to everybody. supplement, but it would be nice to have everybody to be able to stay together. Okay, thanks so much for coming to speak on your application. Um, if the commission doesn't have any questions right now, I'll see if there are any public comments um, on this agenda item. Um, are there any, if, if so, and you're online there, please raise your hand. And I am not seeing any comments, um, unless they're coming in some other way, Alex. But um, so, uh, is there any uh, other discussion by the um, commission on this, or is somebody ready to make a motion? This is Commissioner Mandino, and I can make a motion. I would move um, to approve PZ 23 mm -hmm. 00033. Um, let me see. In, um, in accordance with the findings that were presented in the report and with the staff recommendations. And I don't think that goes to council. Is that correct? Um, I think this isn't to approve to go to council. Is that correct, staff? That is that is correct. This is okay. This is um, to you. Then council does have a ten day review period that they could uh, ask to see this. Okay. Well, then I. My motions is the way I stated it, I believe. I second that. Okay, we have a, a, a motion by Caramandino and a second by Marshall Camp. And do we have any further discussion before voting? All right, then. Um, all those in favor? Um, this, Go ahead. Oh, um, this is Commissioner Mandino. And I just, um, I wanted to state, I really looked at how far the property was from the gentleman who did not want us to approve. And I'm not sure what he's hearing, but it just seems very far to hear any noise. Um, so I just wanted to make that comment. Okay, anything else then? Uh, let's go ahead then and um, uh, vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, that motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Um, do we have, uh, that's the only item we have on our agenda today, Alex. So anything else you need to tell us or Anything the commissioners you need to tell staff? Um, I was going to say that I apologize for get, getting everyone's hopes up on an in-person meeting. Um, they're working, they're working on the council chambers, and I wasn't able to reserve it. Um, so I'm hoping that our next meeting will go back to in-person. Um, we'll maintain that virtual option. So if you need to use that, um, that's still there and it's there for our applicants and the public as well. Um, but we'll have that, that in-person component from now on. Okay. And that's all I have. All right, well, uh, if nobody else has anything, we are adjourned. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye -bye. Yeah.